Blockchain technology holds the potential to revolutionize many aspects of our online lives, particularly in the domain of finance and financial transactions. And Ethereum is the clear leader in this space as the number one smart contract platform per the numbers. But so many people have gripes with Ethereum saying it's too slow, it's too expensive to use for mass adoption. Well, I'm here today to tell you that Ethereum is about to undergo a massive upgrade that's going to reduce this problem even further, help get the technology ready for prime time so that we can onboard the next billion users into the crypto space. But what exactly is going to happen? What's going to change? What will it do? And when will this take place? Well, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with the Ethereum technology on a daily basis and answer a bunch of frequently asked questions I get all the time whenever these upgrades happen. Like, do I need to move my money anywhere? If I'm a developer, do I need to update my app? And am I going to get some type of free coins or airdrop from this upgrade? So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step by step start to finish, break in the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I should do that over at adaptdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about the next big Ethereum upgrade that's coming down the pike. This is going to be the Ethereum Daycoon upgrade, which is going to help lower the gas fees on Ethereum. And it's going to be one of the biggest Ethereum upgrades since the merge. And so in case you're new right here and you don't really understand how this works, well, basically Ethereum is just a software that runs on a bunch of people's computers that collectively makes up the blockchain. And, you know, Ethereum was launched as a version one about eight years ago. And the whole strategy for Ethereum was to get a product out there that was working and then slowly make decentralized upgrades to the protocol over time. And so, you know, you talk about people being mad at Ethereum being too slow to expensive. That's because they're just using the V1 of Ethereum that's getting slowly upgraded over time and slowly fixing these problems. And the last really big upgrade that happened with Ethereum was the merge back in September of 2022 that switched Ethereum to fully running proof of stake where the miners got replaced by validators and people can basically, you know, lock up cryptocurrency into their nodes to help, you know, include transactions into a block and they earn passive income for doing that. It also reduced the ETH issuance combined with EIP-1559 that you see right here, which with those things combined makes ETH deflationary on long timeframes. And so that's a history of recent ETH upgrades. We've had a small upgrade since then that's enabled ETH withdrawals from validators after the merge. And now this next big one is going to be the topic of the rest of this video. All right, so what's included inside this Ethereum Daycoon upgrade? Well, there's five different EIPs that are going to get included here. That just stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. These are essentially the documents that are created or the specifications to say, here's how we want to change Ethereum. And then it goes to this governance process and development before it finally gets included into the blockchain. So there's five different EIPs, but the main one I want to focus on this video is EIP 4844. You might have heard of proto dank sharding. Well, this is the big one that's going to help reduce the layer two gas fees on Ethereum. So let me explain exactly how that works. If you're going to make Ethereum faster and cheaper to use, you have a few options. One is you can change the Ethereum protocol itself try to make it faster and cheaper to use. You can increase the block size. You can do lots of different things that tweak it, but that's unfortunately going to compromise other aspects that Ethereum really cares about, like decentralization and also security. And so instead of doing that, Ethereum's long-term vision is to create what's called a layer two, where you do most of your transactions in this separate environment that piggybacks off the top of Ethereum, and then those transactions get settled back onto the blockchain. You've probably seen different layer twos talked about, like Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync, you know, Base is the newest one launched by Coinbase. All these work a little bit differently, but they basically do the same thing. They let you do transactions in a separate environment. You still pay the gas fees in Ether, not some other cryptocurrency. And then those transactions get settled back onto the main chain, just like this. So you see layer one Ethereum lets you connect you directly. Let's say that one block held, you know, 10 transactions, just for example purposes. That's not the real number, but let's say 10 transactions. Well, you could do you know, let's say 100 transactions in, in like 10 different rolled up batches of transactions on layer two. And then you put all those back into the, the footprint, maybe a single transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, again, those are not the exact numbers, but that's just sort of an illustration for example purposes. And what you can see, there's already a big savings here because all these transactions, you're really just getting a reference to those and their location and their validity on a different chain, but they occupy block space on the layer one blockchain itself. And right now they're using the exact same storage space that an individual transaction will be using on the Ethereum layer one blockchain itself. But what this upgrade does is it essentially creates a new storage slot on the layer one blockchain itself that's going to make all these batches way more efficient 
on the actual main Ethereum chain. So they're not acting just like normal transactions would on the Ethereum chain itself. So these are called blobs. And these new blobs are what are going to reduce transaction fees on layer two. Now that's an important distinction, okay? Because this particular EIP is not necessarily going to make layer one transactions inherently cheaper. So if you're watching this video later and you're using the blockchain, you connect to Ethereum and you connect your wallet and say, oh, the gas fees are still high. That's not the point. If you're using a layer two, those gas fees are already way less than layer one. But after this upgrade takes place, those layer two transactions themselves will just decrease dramatically. And so that's really the highlight of this upgrade in addition to a few other EIPs, which are cool as well. But this is the biggest one by far because it's a big deal for the Ethereum ecosystem. So you probably have some obvious reasons that come to mind, but I'm just going to call out a couple that I think are worth noting. So if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm really optimistic about Ethereum itself becoming the leader in this space. I mean, it already is, but basically as blockchain becomes more of a global sediment later for financial value, that I anticipate Ethereum being the leader in that space and continue to do so. I obviously not have any financial advice. I'm telling you to buy or sell on a cryptocurrency based on this information. But a lot of the skepticism that comes along with that, aside from the, you know, use cases of blockchain and, you know, regulations, blah, 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 is just the scalability and the cost of doing so. Some people say, yeah, that's cool, but like we, we need cheaper transactions fees in order to make that happen. And layer twos are already doing a good job of this, but this is really going to be a forced multiplier for the layer twos themselves to get them much cheaper and approaching sub cent transactions. What that's something we can do as this technology improves over time. And so if you get to that point and you combine this with other catalysts in the space, like, you know, my last video or so, I was talking about the new PayPal stablecoin and how that could be a big deal for crypto is you know, making crypto more of a one-way street, okay, where people are, you know, coming into the crypto space and they're not leaving. If they come in and they start using crypto technology, whether it's DeFi, or NFTs, whatever, they're not, you know, coming in and playing for a while and cashing out and then converting that to dollars to use in their normal lives. They can come in and do that stuff and then stay inside of the crypto space and do things like, you know, pay for their rent, their groceries, their gas, all in one space as we get stable coins more widely adopted at point of sale systems with peer-to-peer -peer payments like, you know, Venmo, which is owned by PayPal and so many more things. All right, so that's why obviously this is gonna be a big deal for Ethereum over the long term. But when is this upgrade expected to go live? Well, we don't have a firm answer on that question, but we have some good guesses, okay? The current sentiment is that that's going to be towards the end of this year, so hopefully inside of 2023. But if you've been a part of the space for a while, you know, these are really just guesses at the end of the day. Um, we could see some things get delayed, okay? You have to understand that upgrading a blockchain is very, very critical. It's not like normal software updates where you can just push it out and something goes wrong. Oh, you just push a bug fix. I mean, we do have client releases that have patches updated to them, but you have to be extra, extra careful because it's like, you know, fixing an airplane while it's flying. You don't want the blockchain to go down. And so great care is taken in this development process. Now, typically how this goes is, I, you know, I would keep an eye on the end of 23, probably Q4. And as we approach that time, what's probably going to happen is that the Ethereum core developers will announce a launch date um, pretty soon before it happens. Okay, they, do, they don't announce this stuff months in advance. It's usually a few weeks in advance because it's basically ready to go. They could you know, theoretically push it live that day, but there just needs to be some coordination with everybody else to line it up before they actually push that down there and, you know, upgrade their nodes. So it's going to fork, all right? And that has a lot of connotations associated with it. And you have to understand how this works. You know, how do you upgrade a blockchain? Well, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, that a blockchain is really just a bunch of different people running the same software on their computers that helps, you know, run the EVM. And so what happens is you create the software update and then everybody downloads it. And whenever they do, you know, a hard fork happens. Now, then you have lots of questions about that. Like, am I going to get free money out of this? We see, you know, chains forking in the past where, you, know, you have one chain that stays behind and it splits and now you had a wallet on both of those chains and now you have two different cryptocurrencies. It's sort of like, you know, double spent, not really, but more of a double balance. Is that going to happen? I think it's incredibly unlikely um, that you would see anything that actually has some staying power because I don't see a reason for people to maintain the old Ethereum chain here after it forks. Like nobody really cares about a chain that's still going to have high layer two fees. I think a vast majority of people will coalesce around the new upgrade that's going to happen. So lots of the common questions I get when these things happen are like, what do I need to do with my money when this happens? Okay. Do I need to move them? Well, your coins are going to get automatically converted over to the new Ethereum chain. Now, is there always a risk of holding coins on a network whenever upgrade happens? Yes, there is. But in terms of you having to move your money from the old Ethereum to the new Ethereum, 
that's going to happen automatically. Another question I get this all the time is like, do I need to do anything with my smart contracts? Do I need to move them from the old Ethereum to the new Ethereum? No, you don't have to do that. All your smart contracts and the state behind those smart contracts will also get automatically converted over. And do I have to make any code changes to my smart contracts, the Solidity code? At the time of recording this video, I'm not aware of any significant code changes, if any, that need to happen in order for your application to be compatible with this new Ethereum version. All right, so that's an overview of the Ethereum Dankun upgrade that's going to happen later this year and why it's such a big deal. So if you like this video, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get ahead of the next wave of crypto expansion that is most likely coming sooner than a lot of people think, then what should you do? Well, now is the time to double down on your skills and become a blockchain developer before things get crazy again. And so how can you do that? Well, you go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like gaming courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step or hey, Maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely. I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Adaptive Diversity.